Miss at Zip Recruiter, and she joins me now from Los Angeles. Julia, great to have you on the program. Great to be with you. Thank you. You know, there are so many ways to read a jobs report. When you look at this jobs report, what's the best indicator of where we are in terms of the labor market and perhaps more critically where we're headed? So this jobs report is the best of all worlds. We saw job gains slow a bit, but remain incredibly strong. And at the same time, wage growth slowed. The labor market kind of looks a bit like it did before the pandemic, when job growth was fast, when participation kept rising, especially among women. And so we could actually sustain that level of job growth. And it was non-inflationary because participation was picking up. That was the key in this report, labor supply growing again. <laughs> We desperately need labor supply. I can agree on that. On wages, though, I mean, how much of that do you think is driven by the fact that where we're still really seeing job growth are lower wage industries? We're still seeing job growth in the service industries, uh, restaurants, hospitality and such. Uh, 245,000 of the 311 that we added were in low wage sectors. I mean, does that pretty much explain why wage growth had moderated so much? Yes, it does. I mean, so part of this is is that change in the industry mix of the jobs being added. Right now, job growth is concentrated in those low-wage, customer-facing industries. And that's a change in this report from what's happened in the prior months. Uh, for months and months and months, we've had unusually sort of unprecedentedly broad-based job gains across the entire economy. Now, uh, industries that are more sensitive to rate increases are showing a slowdown. They're pulling back whereas those customer-facing industries are continuing to charge ahead and hire very rapidly. Do you agree that we are really starting to see a tale of two economies emerge? We're starting to see for the uh, higher-paid, more white-collar jobs, we're seeing those job gains start to slow, but in the parts of the economy where, one, we're still spending in terms of the service industries, but also the lower-wage jobs, the more uh, consumer-facing jobs, we're still seeing that part of the economy pick up steam. Yes. And in many ways, though, that is a tale not of two stories, but of one, of, uh, of convergence, uh, of wage compression, uh, of the bottom coming up and, and joining the top. So, uh, for, you know, if any part of the economy has to hurt, uh, a white collar recession is probably far more tolerable than a blue collar recession. Uh, relatively few jobs so far have been affected by uh, job losses. Uh, the industries that are hardest hit right now are fairly small and large industries that, that are at risk of job uh, losses in the future if the housing market doesn't recover, uh, like construction, are still for now doing remarkably well. Mm. Julia, you know, I have to ask you because ZipRecruiter, as I understand it, utilizes AI, right, to match job seekers with jobs. And AI is something we talk about a lot in the business community and certainly a lot more in the last few weeks. When you look at your studies, who is most concerned about AI perhaps taking their job? I mean, what do you see? <laughs> so this was something we found very interesting. It was the youngest workers who are most worried, probably because they know that AI is going to get so much better during their lifetimes and become so much more capable. Older workers are relatively unconcerned, but young workers, uh, three and four, worry that AI could take their jobs. Mm -hmm. That said, there's pretty good news for them from sort of economic history. Typically, new technologies create many higher paying jobs, uh, even though they do replace some lower paying jobs. Well, it was nice to have fun with that question. Uh, I can't let you go, though, without asking, of course, all eyes on the Federal Reserve's March FOMC meeting. After a job report like this, do you have a prediction in terms of what we see with interest rates, or do you think that it still really hinges on what we see next Tuesday with the uh, CPI report? So I think if I were the Fed looking at this report, I would feel more comfortable about a lower rate increase uh, later in the month. Uh, that's because Anytime inflation rises, it uh, makes the Fed's job easier and actually is perhaps a, you know, a rate increase that, that doesn't need to happen. Uh, that said, everything is going to hinge on the CPI and PPI reports next week. Uh, those will, will swing it either way. Julia Pollock, great to have you today. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much. Take care.